and unmute. Hello, my name is Linda Staley. I am here to share with you how to start a collab. So I'm going to find my notes and um, I'm here from Arlington, Virginia, near Washington, DC in the United States. So we have an hour and I'm going to plan that after this hour you will learn six things from this webinar. How you can work intergenerationally in a process that empowers young people to be change makers. Number two, why it is so important to be intentional and action oriented. Number three, how to identify a topic for a collab. Uh, number four, how to design, host, facilitate a collab. Number five, how to follow up and build on the collab. And finally, how to connect with my organization, the Global Collab Network. So first, um, my name is Linda Staley, and I founded the Global Collab uh, to be a do tank that empowers young people to act as change makers. Um, so we're all about collaboration, we're global, we're all about action, thus the word lab, and we're all about connecting and building networks. So the Global Collaboration Lab Network. I was inspired to create the CoLab after working for 30 years building global science and technology collaborations here in the United States, working with the White House Science Office, the State Department, the National Institutes of Health, and other places and realizing that young people's voices are often not heard and, and um, uh, uh, em employed in policy making deliberations. So, um, and often these organizations, the bureaucracy and a lot of organizations are sort of old school in how they approach problems. So the collab really was created to help uh, build more intentional gatherings. Um, so I am going to see if I can share my screen um, here and um, share with you the actual organization. This is the Global Collab Network, globalcollab.net, and we work to utilize small gatherings um, we call collabs. And here's an example of a picture of a collab, and here's a description of the collabs. And we have incubated out of these small gatherings Teens Dream, a global video contest for teenagers all over the world to focus on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And that's a video contest. And then we also have virtual hubs that focus on seven of the SDGs, um, where teens, teens lead action in these hubs. We have partnered with the Smithsonian to create the Ecoteen Action Network. We have partnered with Global Ties to take our collabs and rebrand them to help the international exchange world. Uh, these are called citizen exchange networks. And we want you to host a collab. So here, if you press on host your own collab, you can get, um, by just submitting your email, um, our two page PDF on how to host your own collab. So you just press that here, okay? So that's what I really want you to do is when you're done, go and uh, put in your email and we will send you a two pager on how to host your own collab. But this webinar will also share with you how to do that. So um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and um, go down here, see if that works. Uh, so we are um, basically the collab has created these small, short, two-hour segments we call collabs that's built on design lab thinking. Um, and we curate stakeholders together around a topic of mutual interest, a topic that is a priority to a young person, uh, specifically teens and millennials. Um, and like I said, uh, we have been experimenting um, since 2014 we have hosted about 50 of these collabs in living rooms and small gatherings. Um, we have purposefully stayed away from hosting these gatherings in formal office buildings. 
because we want to get people away from their silos and we want to focus on building trust and we feel that bringing them into more informal comfortable settings is important um, so we bring them together uh, in small gatherings um, eight to twelve people and we are using this this experience of these gatherings of 50 of these gatherings on topics all sorts of topics that we've hosted so we've taken the best practices and we've whittled it down into this two-page uh, document and I'm going to go over that today in this webinar um, so let's see um, so we want you to host a collab so let's get going so that's our introduction and we're super excited to be partnering with Global Change Makers because they have similar goals and we're all about um, collaboration and not duplicating existing efforts. Okay, so first question, how can an intergenerational intentional process help young people be change makers? So we are all about taking young people and their passions and their ideas and trying to connect them to stakeholders that have resources that can help them. So these are organizations or individuals with expertise, with a history working in that space. Um, they are people that might have resources, networks, clout, um, power to help them with their connections. They may have funding to be helpful. They may have time. Um, but it's all about connecting intergenerationally older folks with their incredible resources with younger folks and their incredible passions and and time and interests in being change makers so we call it a two-way wisdom bridge so that's the first thing um, the second is why is it important to be intentional and action oriented well the collab is all about action um, there are so many organizations and groups that focus on educating and um, inspiring um, but we are uh, so there's think tanks but we're a we're an action-oriented do tank we're all about bringing people together to hear to listen to support to collaborate um, so it's about being intentional and focusing on action. It's not so much about getting people together and listening to somebody tell us what their knowledge is. Um, so it's very important that the people we curate, the people we bring together in these collabs, understand the purpose. Um, the purpose is to hear young people talk about their passions and find ways to support them in being change makers. Okay, number three, how to identify a target topic for a collab. Okay, this is, sorry, that's my dryer. This is very important. Um, so this is a two hour gathering that we're organizing called a collab. Um, it's focused on a young person and their passion. So identifying somebody who is a younger person who's got an idea and sitting down with that person and finding out what they are interested in and narrowing the topic. So let's say this young person says, I'm interested in climate change. Well, that's a huge topic, right? So you gotta narrow it. Um, let's say this person is here in Arlington. So let's find um, this person is a young person, they're in Arlington, they wanna do something on climate change. Let's help that person figure out how to narrow that. So maybe that person's really interested in finding other young people interested but they don't know how to go about that maybe they're interested in educating people um, or maybe they're interested in um, developing you know it's okay to have an action plan around education um, but the important thing is there's an action plan um, so you want to be intentional about what it is you're doing in the collab so let's say the collab is going to focus on um, narrowing to a, a, an area so it's going to be Arlington it's going to focus on climate change it's going to focus on finding young people in the area that are interested in climate change so it's really a recruitment targeted focus okay so that's how can we identify other young people in Arlington interested in climate change so that's the problem set 
Okay, so local ideas, um, trying to be very specific and defined. I hope you get that. And sometimes it takes a little bit of time to find that sort of narrow, narrow your focus of the, what the collab's going to focus on. Okay, number, I think, four. The major focus, how do you design, how do you host, how do you facilitate a collab? So we're going to spend most of our time here talking about that. So first of all, you've got this young person. What ideally you might want to do is think about a collaborator. Who can you collaborate with for this collab? So you're focusing on climate change. Maybe there's an organization in your community that focuses on climate change. Okay. So let's find that organization and say, hey, would you be willing to partner with me to host a small gathering in my house um, with this teenager or this young person that wants to do this effort on climate change? Um, so let's say in Arlington, we're going to find a climate change organization, the Sierra Club or Eco Action Arlington or um, Sunrise or some organization in this area. Okay, and they agree to partner. And so we send out, we, we sit down with them and we say, let's design this together. So they, the teen and maybe me, we sit down and we say, let's design this. Um, so we've got our partner. We want to design a guest list. So we know our topic. We know our partner. We have to figure out, you know, we want to get eight to 12 people in a living room or in a location. We'll talk about that to, um, to um, get the right people in the room. And we want diversity. We don't want all older people, all younger people. We don't want all, all um, one type of person. We don't want all one, one age group or one race or one. We want to mix it up, OK? So mix it up in terms of age, sex, race, you know, to the extent you can, obviously, and expertise. So you don't want all females, you don't want all males, you'd like to have a mix, you'd like to have not ideally all people of color or all people are white, you want a mix, you want a mix of ages, you want a mix of expertise, that's really important. So um, your purpose, and using this example of climate change, your purpose is to try to identify a process for getting more teens and young people to work to collaboratively on climate change. So. Maybe you get a couple organizations that work on climate change. Maybe you get a teacher in the area. Maybe you get a couple students that are really passionate about it. Maybe you get some people in your neighborhood that want to help, um, that care about this issue of climate change. They may not have any expertise. Maybe you get somebody who's a really good communicator. Maybe somebody that works for the no local newspaper or they do social media. You know, but you, you figure out what kind of expertise do I want in this room? So you develop your guest list, OK? So you do this two weeks before your event, or maybe a month before your event. And you have an A list and a B list, and you have to get their emails and such. And then you send out next. You want to ideally get 8 to 12 people in the room. So you're going to have to invite like 20 people, because not everybody's going to come. So you start with your A list, and you say, OK, here's our invite. This is what we're doing. This is what. And we have sample invites we can send. Here is, um, you know, here's what we're doing. You create an email. And we've done at the CoLab, we've created some really fancy emails and made it kind of fun and lots of graphics. And I can share some of that with you. We've done evites. We've done just plain emails. It, you know, it depends on your audience what you think will work. OK, and so you send out the email to maybe 10 or 15 people and you tell them you need to know by five or six days from now and you have a date and I'll talk about the date you know should be um, ideally um, you want to have the date be um, at a time when people can come we always say evenings like maybe five to seven, or actually four to six might be good in the late afternoon, or five to six thirty or seven before dinner, or maybe it's seven thirty to nine thirty, or maybe it's nine to eleven in the mornings. But think about it, you don't want to do it over a meal. Um, we generally encourage you to have like maybe some iced tea and some cookies or 
something they can snack on, some popcorn. This is not about impressing people with food and drink, okay? But you want to have a little bit of snacks. Um, you want to do it at a time that you think will work for your audience. Um, but you want to send out this a couple weeks in advance and give them a clear deadline. And then as you're getting closer and you're getting RSVPs and your goal is to get 8 to 12 people in that room, right? So let's say you have 8 people confirmed. You're going to send out another email because you want to have at least 12 people confirmed because some of those people are going to drop out last minute. And so maybe you'll get at least 10 people confirmed, okay? Um, so think about that. The location, where are you going to have this? Well, it's very important that you have it in a circle, in a space, in a circle. And I have a living room, and I'm going to show you what it looks like in my living room. So I'm going to go back here, try to share my screen, share screen, and then I'm going to show you a picture, see if this works. Um, see if that works. Okay. So this is my living room, and you know, we can get 8 to 12 people in a small space. This is a collab. We have older folks, younger folks. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Obviously, in the time of COVID, we are going to have to do this differently. And we are going to suggest that you might do it in a Zoom, reading, Zoom room for location. So you can do this in a Zoom, okay? And or you can do it in a larger room with people spaced six feet apart, and maybe you have seven people instead of um, 12 people. But I'm going to suggest you do it in a um, Zoom room. Okay, so these are my notes. There we go. Um, so again, uh, location is very important. You want to have a safe, nurturing space. You want to be in a circle, simple food and drinks. It's all about listening, um, and you want to have, in terms of structure, you want to have a facilitator. You want to have somebody who's going to take notes for your collab. And I always have an easel with one of these big um, post-it notes with the magic marker that I use. And so I would strongly urge you to do that, too. A facilitator, a note taker, somebody that takes photographs at the end I'm going to suggest you take a photo of your group if they're comfortable and we're going to love for you to share this on your website if you have one or certainly on the Colab website and what we'd love is for you to create a, a three or four sentence explanation, send a photo and we will put it up on our blog. Um, so I'll talk about that in a minute. So that's sort of um, an overview of how to host and facilitate a collab. Now we're actually going to get into the facilitation part. Um, so how are we doing on time? We're doing great on time. It's um, about 16 minutes into the webinar. So if you're still with me, um, we are going to suggest that you host this by Zoom, that you invite people into the Zoom room, and that you do a, a collab by Zoom, okay? So it might be a little bit different than sitting in a circle, but you're gonna make sure that you welcome everybody. So we're gonna start with welcome introductions and agenda. So again, this is all in the two-pager that you can download from the collab website. And I'll give you that website again at the end. So you're going to begin with a message of welcome. You're going to welcome everybody to your collab, and you're going to talk about what is the purpose? Why are you here? You're going to reiterate what you hope everybody will get out of this two hours in your, in your, in your, um, your collab. You're going to introduce your co-hosts. So let's say you're organizing this with you know, a young person, Maybe the young person is organizing it, and they've got a, an organizing partner in um, a, an organization that they've identified to co-host this with. And you're going to go over again the topic. So again, the topic of this collab is, and you're going to explain the topic. Then you're going to take a few minutes to go over the agenda and explain to everybody the agenda. So this is where it would be great if you had an agenda written out, and you can flash it up on the screen. And this is a great time to get input from the group so they know 
what you're going to do for two hours and they're on board with the agenda maybe they might have some some suggestions for the agenda always be open to collaborative um, suggestions um, so you are going to um, also want to share with them the ground rules for how we're going to engage so for a group like this you want to make sure that everybody is heard and there's a great um, organization called living room conversations and they have um, ground rules that we use at the collab but um, in the um, two-page handout that you'll get uh, there is a um, an email link to um, the ground rules and again, the goal here is to have everybody in the Zoom room or in your circle participate. So you don't want to have anybody dominate the conversation. So we always say check your egos at the door. Tell folks you want to make sure that everyone gets heard and you need their help. Let them know that you'll be taking notes and that you've got a photo that you'll be taken and that there may be a short write-up but on the collab website or another website on the on the collab but that you are not going to attribute anybody so everything is off the record okay um, make sure everybody has snacks or if they're in a zoom room they can have their own snacks and drinks um, and that they're ready to go to work um, and so then you're going to want to after you've done all that and you've uh, talked about the agenda and the the rules of engagement you're going to do some brief introductions and this is really important and you know you can come up with your own way to do introductions sometimes in a two-hour gathering the introductions if you have eight or twelve people can take up thirty minutes so you want to sort of try really hard to figure out how you can do introductions really so that people really feel like they're heard and listened to but that they don't take too much time so if you're face to face with folks and again I keep remembering we're doing this in the time of COVID so you can't really um, get too close to folks but um, you can find ways to maybe ask people to go around and sh share their name where they're from how they heard about this um, what they would like to get out of you know what their hope is for what they'd like to get out of the days the two-hour collab because that's really great if you can hear that because then you can sort of check at the end to see if everybody got out of this what they had hoped okay um, and maybe you can add something like you know their favorite animal or something silly if you want okay so you've got your introductions down um, and you have made sure that everybody has been heard and you've budgeted about 15 minutes for the welcome introduction instructions okay so you've got 15 minutes of your two-hour collab 15 minutes welcome introduction instructions next you're going to go to okay we're going to do a little lay of the land what i call lay of the land um, so this is about 15 minutes and this is a brainstorm that you're going to do and with zoom you've got a whiteboard you can use okay and I haven't figured out how to use the whiteboard but you can figure that out beforehand if you like or not but um, it would be great if you could figure that out I'm going to actually learn how to do that so what we do in the lay of the land is we say okay here's our problem set the first thing we want to do is figure out what already exists in that area in that in that defined area of focus in that problem that we're trying to address so let's say it's climate change and we're trying to identify teens in Arlington that are interested in climate change are there groups in Arlington already doing this uh, yeah there might be okay well let's think about who those groups are let's figure out how we can collaborate with them partner let's figure out what they're doing and maybe where we can focus on a complementary area so you want to just brainstorm and this is where everybody in the circle that's in your your collab is going to throw out what they think is the lay of the land so what does this issue look like what do we know who's doing similar work um, and we're going to capture all this and so maybe each of the people in the room write down on a sticky note 
and then they hold it up to the screen or they share it and they take turns listening to everybody share their input in the Zoom room. Or if you're in a meeting in a gathering, you might have a big easel and ask everybody to go up to the front and put their sticky note up on the easel, come back, sit down, and then the facilitator, and they can stand up and share what's on their sticky note, okay? So basically you're mapping. You're doing a quick visual map of what already exists in that area that you're focusing on. So um, you want to get everybody's input. This is quick and dirty. It won't be perfect. It's entirely fine. You spend 15 minutes on this, right? So you've got a visual map of what exists in this topic area. Or, you know, you can go to any topic area and imagine what that would look like. But the important thing is you want to not, you want to know what you're going into. Never assume you're the first person that's thought of this, right? There's lots of people that have thought of this problem. And you want to be respectful and you want to learn and build on what they've already done. Okay? And ideally complement, not duplicate. Okay. So I hope you understand lay of the land. It's the mapping exercise. The second thing you want to do in your collab is once you've got the group and you've got the focus and you've done the mapping, is you want to think about where are you going? What are you trying to accomplish? What's the goal of this exercise? Okay, so we know where we're going. We all have a common view of what we're trying to accomplish. So um, let's think about, I call this the visioning exercise, but let's think about in an ideal world, let's say in two to five years, or let's say in the case of trying to identify teams that care about climate change in Arlington. Let's say that maybe in the next three months, it, at the end of three months, our vision would be that we will have created a network of teams, that we have lists and lists and lists of teams that we've developed, um, and that those teams have been contacted. And, you know, so this is where we ask everybody in the room to think about sometime down the road, you can come up with how far, is it three months, three years, five years, what would, what would it look like if we were successful in this exercise that we're undertaking? You can again ask people just to blurt out their ideas, go around the room, you've got 15 minutes. Um, uh, ask them to maybe write on a sticky note what they think about this. Um, go up and share. There's no good ideas. There's no bad ideas. There's no judgment. Okay. Always remember that. Um, but it's really important to have a vision of where you're going. So in this example of climate change, okay, we've got a goal of trying to get teams focused on climate change in Arlington, Virginia. That's the purpose of this collab. Okay, so our vision is that maybe in three months we'll have a whole bunch of lists, and this is how we'll get the lists. Well, we're not quite there yet, but our goal would be to have a list of teams, and our goal would be to actually have met these teams. And our vision is that we see and meet a whole bunch of teams that care about climate change, and we've connected with them, um, and we've engaged them, and they're working with us collaboratively and you know maybe we're creating something together and you know all sorts of people can come up with all sorts of ideas of what this could look like so vision vision it's a vision of what this could look like after you do that for 15 minutes let's see we're about 45 minutes in right of our collab right so now we have another 15 minutes of what I call obstacles and challenges so okay what are the challenges in getting this list? What are the obstacles? What are the um, things that are get, gonna get in the way? Well, let me think about that. You're gonna do a brainstorm again. Maybe somebody says, well, time. You know, it's a great idea, but no one does the work to get these teams. Or maybe we do the work, but we don't ever find any teams because the ideas we thought to get these teams didn't work. Or the challenge is we found the teams, but they're not responding to our emails. Okay, so then we have to think about, okay, let's think, how do you communicate with teams? Well, maybe we have to get their phone numbers so we can text them. Or maybe we go and we speak to their environmental clubs. 
And we call the school and say, can we meet the teacher that runs this environmental club at this school and can we talk to her or him? Or maybe we do some social media outreach or you know, the obstacles, what are the challenges and the obstacles? So we're thinking about what's gonna get in the way of this. Um, budget about 15 minutes again. And again, these budgets, this is what works for you. You know, in a collab, you want to be flexible. You want to, you know, maybe that in one part of it, you go way over. In another part of it, you find, ah, this doesn't work, you know, and it only takes five minutes. Or, you know, or maybe, um, you know. So now you've identified the problem. You've done the lay of the land, the mapping. You've done the vision, where you're going. You've looked at some of the challenges and the obstacles and the opportunities. You could add that there as well if you want. So now a whole hour has gone by, okay? So you've kind of created a foundation around your issue, the problem set that you're trying to address. Okay, so now I say, what now? Uh, now what you're gonna do is open it up for, okay, with all this information, what are you going to do? You've got all this information, what are you going to do? So building on these segments, ask the group, what makes sense right now as a realistic next step? Is there something that, stand that stands out as an opportunity for collaborative action that people in this room could make happen? And you know, it's really important to focus on actions that are small and concrete and realistic and achievable and that can build, you know. So for example, um, some groups decide that they want to um, come together and they want to go off, do some homework and come back together. Um, so they come up with an action plan. They say, okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to do the research on this group of teens and I'm going to research these schools and get in touch and find out how to reach the teens through these schools. Another person might say, I'm going to develop a social media campaign and I'll do that. And another person might say, I'm going to contact this environmental group and this environmental group, and I'm going to do that. Another person might do something else. So, you know, maybe you come up with some assignments and you say, we're going to come back in two weeks or a month, and we're going to come back and fig share what we learned, and we're going to try to build on that. And then maybe after that session, uh, we will then, um, you know, come back and maybe we'll develop a listserv. Maybe we'll develop um, a collab for those kids. Those kids would come in the room and they would themselves be in this room. So this room would be full of teens and those teens would be focused on climate change. And we would use it as a brainstorm to figure out how they want to get involved in climate change. And then we would dive deeper based on what they say. And then the next collab would come together on one of the projects and maybe there'd be a collab on another project. And before you know it, you have a whole bunch of collabs going on on different parts and different projects that teens are interested in. Because again, this is all about following the passions of the young people. And you can do this with teens, you can do them with millennials, with any age group of young people, okay? So it's 4.30. I've been talking for 30 minutes in this webinar. And, um, we have gone through an example of what actually a collab looks like. So we've talked about the process of actually running the collab, where you're facilitating and you have somebody else writing notes and taking notes on the Zoom call, capturing everybody's ideas. Um, you have a photographer. You can take, by the way, um, so I'm going to, so I'm going to talk about wrap up. So you've just done this incredible collab and the section that you just went through called what now, that's like an open-ended session of about 30 to 45 minutes. So it's the catch all session about what are you going to do? Okay. And there's lots of time here. So if you find that you're running late, this might be instead of 45 minutes it might be 20 minutes or 25 minutes. Okay. But, You've got a good block of time to sort of brainstorm with your group. By now, you hopefully have, everybody's been heard. Everybody's been throwing out ideas. Everybody's sharing their, their insights. And now as a facilitator, you wanna wrap this up. 
because you promised everybody you'd be out in two hours. And two hours is a super long time to be in a Zoom call, let alone a regular meeting. So the facilitator's job is to summarize what just happened. And um, so you're going to go over things. You're going to also, most importantly, you're, you're going to go over actions. What are the assignments? And um, what's the next step? And then you're going to tell everybody that you are going to send an email to everybody in this Zoom call or in this collab gathering um, with the notes from this meeting. And you're going to take a group picture. And I don't know if you know how to do that with um, your, a screenshot of your Zoom room. So ask everybody to smile. And you're going to have a Zoom with everybody's pictures. So um, that picture of your group, and if you're doing it in person, you'll have somebody take a photo of all of you in a circle. Um, that photo and um, the minutes from the meeting will go out to everybody along with everybody's email so that everybody in that room can follow up with everybody. And then in that email is going to be the action of what happens next. OK? Um, so you're going to document the event. Um, with the follow-up email. And you're going to give everybody virtual hugs and thanks and two hours hopefully well spent. And you're going to do this wrap up in 10 to 15 minutes, OK? And the goal is really to bring everybody in to get them excited about supporting a young person, to get them brainstorming. Um, to, the idea really is to incubate and spin out an initiative if you can. So. Um, that's what we're hoping will happen, is that it, this will incubate, spin out, spawn, whatever verb you like, um, some initiative. And so it will be the beginning of a relationship between people that are passionate about supporting a change maker. So um, what the Global CoLab, uh, let's see. So I'm going to now go to the fifth area that we said you would get out of this, which is how to build on the outcome of a collab. So I'm going to reiterate what I just said, which is typically if a collab is successful, those of you in the room will say that it was two hours well spent, that you want to meet again to dive deeper and to build on the first collab. And um, you want to work collaboratively to try to support this change maker in, in moving their action forward. Um, so we have done that at the Global CoLab. We've created a project called Teen Stream. Um, I think I mentioned that earlier. And the Eco Teen Action Network, uh, collaboration with the Smithsonian. And we've created other initiatives um, working with Global Ties and the State Department and the International Visitors Leadership Program, uh, where we, I think I mentioned this, um, have rebranded this process and we call it citizen exchange circles and I've been leading conversations um, and trainings with people across the United States on how to host a citizen exchange circle which is exactly what I just shared with you. So um, in conclusion we hope we've inspired you uh, in these 35 minutes here to host your own collab and what we would ask in return is that you not only host a collab, but you send us an email that says you've hosted a collab and tell us how it went. And what we would love more than anything is for you to send a photo of your collab, um, whether it was by Zoom or in person, with like a short description of what that collab, what happened in that collab. And we will put it up as a blog on our Global Collab website everybody to see in our social media, our newsletter, and we want to share your, your collab. And so we are all about empowering people all over the planet to take action into their own living rooms, their own communities, their own um, campfires. If you want to do it around a campfire, you can do it any way you want, okay? You do not have to have a fancy space. That is the most important thing. You do not have to serve fancy food. You do not, you just have to have passion. You have to have the desire to bring the right people together to support you. And so we hope this has been helpful. And um, I'm super excited. My name is Linda Staley. Um, I'm the founder of the Global Collab Network. I would love it if you get in touch. 
uh, the email is info at globalcollab.net. That's I-N-F-O at globalcollab.net. So with that, I am going to say goodbye and I wish you the best of luck and I'm super excited. I hope to hear from you. Thank you so much.